All right, <clears throat> welcome to the Tuck Everlasting Chapters 1 through 14 review. We'll start with the prologue, where three unconnected events were described in the first, last week of August. First, May Tuck went out to, to the village of Trigat to see her sons that she did every 10 years. Then at noon, Winnie Foster decided she would run away from home. And then at sunset on the same day, a stranger came to the Foster's house. He was looking for someone, but he didn't say who. The next chapter talked about how the cows laid out the road. It was a good thing because the cows did not go into the woods where there was a mysterious tree that everyone should avoid. They didn't say why, though. Then the next chapter was back to May Tuck, and she was going out, and she was talking to her husband, Angus Tuck, and who was very cranky. And we found out at the end of the chapter that they didn't need to look in the mirror because both of them and their two sons had looked exactly the same for 87 years. So in the years. next chapter, Winnie was talking to a frog and telling a toad, sorry, and telling the toad how she was going to run away from home. And she was afraid that the toad didn't believe her. She said she was sick of being cooped up and that she wanted a new name because it got cut called on too much. So in the next scene, it was nighttime and Winnie was catching fireflies when a stranger in a yellow suit showed up. He asked about if she knew everyone and she said no, but maybe her father did. He said he'd talk to her later. Then at the very end, they heard a music box and the stranger seemed very excited. So the next morning, Winnie got up and told the frog she wasn't running away, but instead she went to the woods her family owned where she saw a handsome young man who she fell in love with. And as they were talking, he said he was 17, but really 104. Or was it the other way around? And then she wanted to get a drink of water, but he said, no, you can't. And as they were arguing, his family, because he was Jesse Tuck, showed up and they snatched Winnie and they took her away on her horse. As they were going away, Winnie saw the stranger she saw last night, but she was too scared to call out to him. Then they sat out by a stream, and the Tucks told her the strangest story. Years ago, they had walked through that same woods, and everyone had drunk from the spring, except for the cat. And strange things happened. The horse got shot, but he didn't get hurt. Jesse fell on his head. No one seemed to get any older. Tuck went crazy thinking that they could live forever, so he shot himself. And when he did, the bullet just went right through him. What they didn't know is when they told the story, the man in the yellow suit was listening to them the whole time. Then they had dinner at the Tuck's house, and after dinner, Angus took her out into the boat to explain why she couldn't tell anyone about the water. He tried to tell her that the water was not as good as everyone thought it would be, and that instead of really giving you a happy, eternal life, it just made you stuck wherever you were, and that it would be a really bad thing if everyone found out about it, because they would be dropped off the cycle of life. But then Miles shouted out, Somebody stole the horse! At the same time, the man in the yellow suit went to the foster's house and told Winnie's parents he knew where she was. That night, Winnie had to sleep on the tuck sofa and she felt very scared. May came down to comfort her and said she wished that she were their child. Later on, Tuck came down and he said that he was very sorry and wished there was something he could do for her. But she said she was okay. Then just as Winnie was going to get to sleep, Jessie came down and said though she should keep it as the water a secret, it would be great if she would drink it when she was 17, and then she and Jesse could get married and have a good time that went on forever and ever and ever. Mm -hmm.